look <clears throat> beyond that monstrous exterior and you see what the Egyptians were trying to encapsulate with these images. For example, you have the god Osiris, very tied in with nature. In fact, I'm convinced that the, his depiction as being green has to do with chlorophyll and photosynthesis and the color of plants because he was not only a solar afterlife god, in other words, an underworld god, I should say, that after the sun goes down, it merges with Osiris. Osiris takes it, brings it through the night where it's reborn again as Horus in the morning, yeah. born of the virginal dawn in the morning. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the son of God, born of the virgin. That All that stuff, I start find, you start, start finding these things. Uh, I can go into that in a minute. But as far as the nature-worshipping aspect goes, so Osiris has this solar expression but he also is the water of the Nile. He's water itself, but the water of the Nile as it overflows the banks, bringing its fertility to the Egyptian people. They were extremely dependent on that. In fact, there would be famine, drought. If there was drought, there was famine. If the water did not overflow the banks of the Nile, they were not able to grow their food. And so they they revered this. this uh, they thought it was divine and godly. And... I don't have a problem with people looking at their natural world in that way. Right. Or beyond the natural world, up into the stars and the skies, and you can spread your brain out into the cosmos if you want to. I don't care. I don't care what people do with their own minds. <laughs> uh, they can, you know, I really don't. They can think yes. atheistically. They can think theistically. I don't care. Absolutely. That's why I got into a kind of a fracas with an atheist today, because I don't consider myself, I don't call myself an atheist. I don't call myself atheist. I engage in wherever my mind wants to wander. And if I want to think theistically in any given moment, I will. If I want to think atheistically in any given moment, I will. I think it's appropriate. I always say this because I, I really would, if people are interested in how I see the reality, that's how I see it. If I, if you want to go up on top of a mountain and contemplate the cosmos, uh, that there's a one giant glorious God, uh, I, I would like to see a more sophisticated concept, but that's up to you. Uh, to, right. to think that way, uh, I'm not interested in mind control at all. I am interested in what has happened on planet Earth, and you know beyond. I mean, I'm also interested in, in the entire cosmos. But as far as myths and the mythicist position or mythicism goes, I'm trying to discern what is fact from fiction, and why is it fiction then? Uh, why is it myth? What does it mean? That's all I'm doing. All this ascription of motivation, a motive to me, is false. If it's not innocent, because that's all I'm doing. I'm just observing. I'm seeing something like in that Mother Goddess blog. I mentioned that Mari is one of the names of the Mother Goddess, and in fact, this name Mari or Mary right. goes back apparently thousands of years. It must have come, from what I'm seeing, from that southern Indian peninsula development there, that where the southern Indian goddess is named Mari. And so now we find this word Mari all over the place. If humanity spread from that point, according to DNA, then it looks like Mari spread with it. Because we spent all the way up into Ireland, you know, from India, apparently, where we find Indo-European language. So with the language, apparently came these concepts of a mother goddess named Mari, and there's many manifestations of this name. There's Mara, Miriam, Mariamne, there's Mariham, Mira, Maria, Marina. It goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So if I see something like that, and I I know what that goddess concept represents, according to our best research, this mother goddess concept dates back 7,000 years, maybe more, uh, 10,000. It may have come with the Africans 70,000 years ago. I don't know. I'm still looking into all of that, and I'm going to probably spend the rest of my life doing that. But we do know that there was this notion attached to the mother goddess concept that she was uh, self-generating and that she generated, since she was self-generating, she was virginal. She was the virgin mother. She gave birth to the whole cosmos. 
this observation being made, of course, by people, primitive, so-called primitive people, observing women giving birth. It's very logical. Yes. So they figured that the that the universe, they see sentience permeating the universe. They figured that the universe is a being and that this being is female. Listen, it was not exclusively female. There was this consort concept and that we have to trace the development of these ideas as well. They're not singular. They don't occur uh, independent of each other. But in general, there's this female virginal being who's giving birth to the universe. So we have yes. a virgin mother named Mary. Okay. Indeed. <laughs> so now, if I know that information, what am I supposed to think when I read Christian doctrine? Well, you're Only two thousand years old. Well, you're supposed <laughs> to think that the, the the devil set that all up so that it would make it look like uh, that uh, that it was uh, that Christianity was just an offshoot of the of the evil demon devils who uh, tried to plagiarize the whole thing before Jesus came. Which see, okay, you know, Justin Martyr. <laughs> <laughs> the Tertullian. And, yeah, well, of course, you know, um, it, this is the in, this is the crux of of some of the uh, of some of the arguments that people will give for for why we see correlations like this between uh, ancient religious philosophy and Christianity. Uh, it's a desperate attempt on their part to try and um, explain away things that have a much simpler explanation. <laughs> that it, you know, just... it also requires us to be hateful towards these other cultures. Oh, the devil! They're all. De I'm not. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the Greeks were not being led by the devil. Okay, that's just calumny, and I'm sick of that kind of calumny. And the same thing with the the Indians. Even though I got attacked by a couple of Hindus today. <laughs> <laughs> they get their knickers in a twist, but you know uh, uh, the Indians are not devil worshippers, and that's that's the same stupid bigotry that's caused religious warfare all over the planet for thousands of years. It's the it's the reason why atheists. I've heard several many people have written these little comments ban ban religion. They want to ban religion because of these stupid, divisive, bigot prejudices. So. Uh, if I can I look at this clearly without that kind of prejudice and ask myself, why am I seeing a virgin mother named Mary dating back 5,000 or 10,000 years? Right. <laughs> okay, what does it mean if it really wasn't just a, a Jewish maiden 2,000 years ago? Right. Uh, well, what does it mean? In that case, it's a very cosmic being. Now, we have this mother goddess concept projected on all kinds of natural aspects of our world around us. So we could also say that uh, later on, especially the moon was representative of the mother who gives birth to the sunlight, and that's a reflection of the sun's rays in the moon's surface. Mm -hmm. You start seeing these myths, when you start looking at them as myths, and realizing how they permeate cultures all over the planet, then you see that there's actually quite a lot of wisdom in them, and they, it transcends cultural and ethnic, ethnic bias, uh, that we are not focused on a god who supposedly walked the earth 2,000 years ago, was a particular ethnicity, and he's a man, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, that we, we uh, see a transcendent concept uh, that actually has some scientific value. Knowing that the sun's rays are reflected in the moon's surface, that's, that's a scientific observation. It makes it into the Bible as well in the story of the Laila, the moon goddess, cutting the, uh, the rays, the solar rays, the hair of Samson, Samson the sun god. Okay? Yes. There's nothing diabolical about understanding what these myths mean. In fact, they're conveying really important scientific information. Indeed, so, they are. Indeed, they are. Yeah. And of Which course, uh, yeah, and and the symbolism is uh, incredible. And uh, if one can just uh, shed away the dogma that surrounds it, to the, the way it's presented, um, 
one one can come to understand that there is a, a an incredible story there, an incredible symbolism uh, um, that's that's being represented uh, from from ancient times. Um, let me uh, let me go ahead and bring this caller on the line. Uh, he's been patiently holding, and see if they have a question for you, and then sure. we'll move on. Okay. All right, caller two one six area code. You have a question. Hello, are Hello you there? there? I was. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. I was just wondering how um, you uh, respond to people, uh, a Christian, uh, a, a, a devout Christians who are faced with the fact that um, horribly tragic things happen to them, uh, for instance, in Christchurch, New Zealand. At, at the same t- even though something like that happens, they maintain their devout uh, you know, allegiance to Christianity. But how do, you, how do you respond to a person like that or people like that? Well, I see that... I see where they're coming from. Is I don't know exactly where in, every individual is coming from, but a kind of a there's a psychological issue there. Obviously, that uh, you're told as a child, and I went through this conditioning too, but it was very mild. I was very inoculated against any kind of rough, harsh brainwashing or conditioning. But you're told as a child that there's this giant male being somewhere outside of you, not part of you. <laughs> except if you submit your will to him, and that you basically are born in sin and that you have to uh, pray to the Father Jesus and so forth, and God the Father. And it's kind of scary. And so I, I know how people have gone through this sort of thing. If a tragedy happens, they'll, start, they'll blame themselves. They won't look and say, well, obviously there can't be any good God in charge of everything because this horrible thing happened. They'll say something like, oh, I didn't pray the right way. Uh, I did something bad. And you see people beating themselves up like this all the time. So if they start putting that kind of energy into, or, or uh, not just energy, but effort and time into building this, I don't know, uh, this belief system, that they're going to be very defensive of it. And you could make some sort of simple childlike observation and they'll get bent out of shape. But I think it's personally healthy if people do question and doubt, especially if something terrible happens. You have to wonder, look, how could I prevent this realistically in the future rather than I didn't talk to an invisible man well enough to prevent it. Uh, Everything that is bad is blamed on the devil and God is excluded and and excused from everything when in fact if God is all powerful then he should be the one who is blamed for these terrible things. And indeed, in Judaism, there's not this real straight-cut division between God and the devil. There's, you know, adversary, Satan, but Shaitan, but God is responsible for bad things, too. And people do also think in that way. They'll think, well, God brought this upon me because I did something wrong. So you have two dynamics going on there. One is blaming yourself for God punishing you or blaming the devil or getting the better of God, which is a very strange perspective of reality in any event when you think that God lets somehow the all-powerful God just can't keep up with the devil. And the devil's always getting the better of God and taking care, taking charge of reality and causing horrible things to happen. So you know, well, I don't well, know I, how... I, I, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I see comments com- uh, popping up on the screen here. Uh accusing you of being satanic I mean a, a few of them there are few but but they're yeah, popping up people, and, uh, and and that's just for denying uh, the existence yeah. of uh, or the historicity of Christ and yeah. uh, then I, I, I have to wonder um, why it is they don't uh, consider the acts of God or the acts of let's say the Jesus Christ of Christ Church New Zealand as being satanic acts also. I mean, you know, hundreds or thousands of people die in an earthquake, and I would think that if God allowed that to happen, then God himself has just committed a satanic act. 
Right. No, that, that's what happens all over the planet. And they can't uh, see it that way. Yeah. You know, the Japanese horrible tsunami and the earthquake in Japan, there was a Muslim guy who was trying to go through customs that very day, and he had his wife in a burqa, and the Japanese were kind of giving her a bad time about passing the burqa through their, you know, through their uh, customs areas or whatever to enter into the country. And so this guy actually went on the Internet and said that Allah had destroyed Japan because of what they had done to him and his wife. Oh, I mean, and the what, one lady with the burqa, yeah. Yeah. What, what, are, you, what are you going to do with this? You know, this is what we're all, everybody, it's all about them. It's all about their ego, and, and my, my God is going to punish you. This is just a buggery, okay? <laughs> it <laughs> is. plain buggery. It is. If I, could just, people, if, yeah. if I could just jump in for a second um, sure. to, to note this, that um, even according to the Bible itself, um, supposedly uh, God created Satan. So even – and then he's supposedly all-powerful at the same time so and all-knowing. So he knew that when he created <laughs> Satan, it'd be evil, and he knew he was going to do all the stuff that he did. And he let him loose anyway. So ultimately, no matter how you slice it, God created evil and adversarial and satanic ideas. And even if something were to be attributed to Satan, ultimately it's God's fault because God created him. And yet you can't you can't have uh, there's a there there's a dichotomy in the minds of people I believe who have a religious uh, ideology that they. Uh, steadfastly hold to, and that is that uh, the the ideology is so ingrained in them uh, uh, psychologically that they have an overwhelming desire to uphold that over and above everything else, so that they will go through whatever kind of lengths are necessary to try and resolve that within their minds because it creates a schism in their mind. And because they hold that to be the truest thing, they will come up with just about every kind of argument that they can to try and explain away the fact that God also created evil. Uh, that, yeah, well, when you think... Very philosophical. When you think of the uh, 1,700 years, 1,700 years of... Uh, the threat of, of imprisonment, torture, and execution for not believing the Christian mm. creed, uh, right. and that and, and if that's been indoctrinated and pounded into the minds of, you know, at least the people who are primarily Christians, that means European people. I would say that 1,700 years of that indoctrination mm-hmm. uh, makes for a long, long-term hangover. Yes, that would be called a meme that we just can't get rid of, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, look at that. What I was saying that my family comes from missionaries from 1630. So <laughs> I, I'm now, obviously, uh, that's very strange that I escaped this meme. <laughs> But, you know, I, did, I wasn't raised in fear. And a lot of these people who are so fanatical are extremely afraid that if you step out of line, exactly what you were saying is going to happen. We're all going to get slam dunked. But at that point, you have to ask yourself, is that God? <laughs> really? Because if that's God, then we have a problem. And I'm not going to accept that that's God, that God is this evil creature that goes around beating the crap out of little puny human beings. You know, just so jealous and angry and wrathful and vengeful, and this is yeah. a this is a cultural artifact from the the Bronze Age. Okay, and we have to depict, we have to perceive and depict these concepts in a much more sophisticated way, rather than that Old Testament ranting, raving, destroying destroyer of worlds. You know, uh, need something like what Carl Sagan about, said about God, that God is the old man tallying sparrows, or, or every hair on your head, or however he, he, he said it, uh, is a ridiculous idea. But if you want to define God as gravity, well, then it, then he, it exists. And at that point, though, it, it's not very emotional. There's no satisfaction in praying to gravity. Uh, so, but 
just if we can expand our concept of God to en- en- encompass the entire cosmos in all its permutations and in its infinity, then it, you know, I mean, it, the, it loses all its charge. It loses its ethnocentric uh, flavor. It loses its gender because God is male in these Abrahamic religions. The monotheistic God is a very angry man. And so we have to get just go beyond that. That's an ethnocentric, misogynistic concept that dates from three thousand years ago. Mm. Like tribe. you said in one of your, like you said in one of your notes, uh, G O D D E S S uh, slash God G O D would <laughs> be a more appropriate term. I, I, I like goddess best because it, it contains both G-O-D and then the G-O-D-D-E-S-S. <laughs> Male and female, well, then that get, is. Then, yeah, then you get uh, some men ranting that, you know, we're going to have a, just an uh, opposite tyranny from from female domination. Uh, so, <laughs> But I think we should be able to throw these concepts around and talk about them without everybody getting all frantic. Oh goodness! I wish we could too. I mean, uh, it would be great to be able to have a you know a logical, free-thinking conversation where people can present their points of view without being called Luciferian, Satanic, uh, New Agey, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And and, and you know, um, uh, just just still to... breaking that commandment. What's this, the sixth commandment? Thou shalt not bear false witness against our neighbor. Did you not get that point? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay. I'm sure they could find some scripture that would tell them it's okay to do that when they're reproofing the devil. Oh, yes. <laughs> like in uh, what is it in the Pauline epistles where I'm not supposed to speak because of oh, that's right. Not be and you got to teaching gotta, a man. I forbid it. Right, and keep your keep your head covered too while yes, you're at. Well, you know, yeah. it's all about the gender and the genitals. I mean, this is. What, <laughs> That's one of the major problems with 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 all of these religions is that what what has happened is that the the ancient goddess has basically been um, supplanted by the male god, who, um, as you've noted, is an angry old man, and uh, mm-hmm. he's probably angry because he ain't got no woman. Uh, because the goddess well, they just take, they, they took the goddess away from him. Exactly. That was his exactly. Asherah, right? In the Bible. Right. So if he was, so if he is mad, and he's a mad old man, it, there's a good reason. It's because they've done yeah. away with the goddess and the nurturing. He just goes aspect. for. He just goes for thirteen-year-old maidens in in Jerusalem. That's. What, <laughs> I mean, what well, kind of crazy story is that? <laughs> well, or, or or like Zeus, he was uh, randy as hell and would have sex <laughs> with a goat and all these other things with various people. you got to wonder what the women were thinking when a goat came in to <laughs> sex with them. I mean, <laughs> just, it's just, me. Okay, or oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Jeez. Well, see, you can't, you can't, if you don't look at these things as real stories that happen on planet Earth, and not as atrocious as they come across. <laughs> I, I, mean, I know, the, but I, I know, the but Jewish but, mythology is atrocious. Yeah, it is. In 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 the Bible is uh, is atrocious in, in in that way because it does depict these things in, in in very realistic terms, and you're supposed to accept it as historical validity. Um, caller, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I didn't want to. Cut you no, out. That, that's that's fine. I thank you very much. Oh, okay, great. Thanks for well, calling thank in. I'll I'll thank keep you. listening. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'll appreciate it. Put you back on hold there. All right. Um uh anyway, uh you know, speaking of the Bible, um uh let me see. I did have a reference here I wanted to ask you about. Um uh The Myth Maker by uh Hi, Jac- uh, Maccabee. Yeah, by Hi Maccabee. Um, I find some of the information in, in this book to be very revelatory because especially in especially in relation to um the mystery religions and the uh, um uh there are two different ways that you can go, I mean, as far as looking at Paul. Now, there's certainly a major question as to whether or not there's even a character named Paul. Um I mean, we don't really have one, yeah. right. So we we don't 
really have a you know a good historical record for his existence at all even uh but if we even grant that there were you know a person or a group of people that supposedly were representing you know um someone or or a group of people over time that uh, that comes from that we see a very strong uh influence in Paul and Paul's writings in the Bible at least those attributed to him between uh, the mystery schools and um, mm-hmm. the fact that he came from Tarsus, which is a known mm-hmm. yeah. uh, Addis worshiping place. Um, and, and Mithra. And Mithra as well. And of course, they, they sort of got syncretized later in uh, the Roman uh, the Roman Empire um, somewhat. Uh, and the, the, the devotions of the mystery schools, of course, are almost uh, exactly the same as uh, some of the um you know um the accoutrements of the church like uh yeah, baptism sure. yeah baptism and uh rebirth and um y- you know communion all, all of these things are are seen in there and uh resurrection we, yeah resurrection being reborn the promised resurrection the removal of sins exactly all these concepts, you don't find – the details change. It's, a, it's sort of like the original man leaving Africa. You know, He's different looking in different parts of the planet, but still the basic archetype is there. Two legs, two arms, mouth, eyes, nose, the whole nine yards. Uh, that's the same thing with the religion. We call it archetypal mythos, and mm-hmm. you, you trace it back. See what do you, like I said before when I when I am faced with a virgin mother goddess named Mary dating to thousands of years prior to the common era what am I supposed to think I'm going to go for this whole mythicist perspective position mythicism uh then the same thing happens when you start looking at the various gods of the world who were in especially the ones that were in the area where Christianity began to be formulated and the influences on these people did not happen in a vacuum. The only way you can make this story true is if it happened in a vacuum. And that's what they try to do when they stick it in that little 90-mile spot in in, uh, Israel. They say, well, it was all completely in this vacuum and there were no influences from the outside world. It's like this unreal fog here, you know, surrounding, enveloping this story. But if you put it in the context of very busy cultural exchange going on all over the Mediterranean, including at Alexandria, a massive library collection of books from half a million manuscripts from around the known world going into India even, and possibly even China. Then you have to uh, start looking at the possible influences on Christianity not in a vacuum, which did not develop in a vacuum. Indeed. And you start seeing things like the god Mithra, born on December 25th. Uh, in the Eastern tradition, he's born of a virgin mother. And you start wondering, well, what the heck? And then you then you see that Mithra is largely a solar deity, a sun god. And so then you say, well, gee, if that's the characteristics of a sun god, then, hmm, what is this character in the New Testament? You know, the, These right. are reasonable questions to ask when you have received accurate information and uh, are you know, rather than just block it out, deny it, lie about it, or whatever else, you have to ask yourself, well, what, what am I really looking at here then? Am I looking at a mythical am I looking at a historical tale or am I looking at a myth? Right. And and you even you even point out the fact that uh, some of the early church fathers uh uh uh, there there were at least a couple of them that recognized that there was this uh, other strain of thought that was going on where there were these incredible similarities between their religions and rather <laughs> than and rather than well some of them of course uh, came up with elaborate theories as to why that would be the case but there were a few that were honest enough to to use to use those religions as a defense of their own by saying look we don't do anything different than you guys do with your mystery cults. Basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course, uh, but they're saying our religion is just as valid as yours because we're doing the same thing as the mystery religion exactly. that you guys are following. 
You know what I mean? In other words, they're saying, we, we have the same doctrines, the same ideology, et cetera, which is very similar to your own. So why are you persecuting us? Because we're doing the same thing you guys are. Exactly. That would be Justin Martyr in particular, in the, around 150 ADCE. Yeah, he's trying to give respectability to Christianity by comparing it favorably, but in one instance, obviously, to these other pre-Christian religions, such as, they, he calls them the sons of Jove, which would be Jupiter, Zeus. Uh, obviously, that's uh, in a Roman-dominated period, but right. or, but he's talking about the Greek and the Roman gods. And he's saying that when we speak of the virgin birth, we say nothing different than what you say of your god Perseus, who was born of Danai, who the Zeus impregnated through a golden shower. So he's basically saying that Perseus was born of a virgin. Uh, so now we know, hey, this is a pre-Christian uh, concept. But we already we know that now for sure. There is no arguing against this. I have this documentation, really well done, uh, this fabulous book called Virgin Mother Goddesses of Antiquity. It's the finished. That concept of the Virgin Mother is pre-Christian found all over the place. And so when you know that one motif, that's supposed to be unique divine revelation to Christianity mm -hmm. is actually a mythical pre-Christian concept, then you have to suspect all the other ones, especially the supernatural ones, walking on water, raising from the dead, ascending into heaven, uh, transfiguring on a mount, ra uh, healing people, the sick, using spit to, uh, for, uh, to heal blind men, all these motifs that are not plausibly scientific, the supernatural. These, you have to suspect, right, they're myths, right? So the people who think that uh, Jesus Christ was a real person, but he had all these myths added to his his uh, mundane biography, are also then saying that these motifs are pre-Christian. They didn't just make them up on the spot when they added them to his biography. They They took them from all these other mystery schools. They took them from the religions and mythologies of the known world. And you can trace these things. I do that in my Christ in Egypt, and especially because we have so much documentation from ancient Egypt. And so much has been destroyed. So we've lost the, tra the thread. I can pick it up. I'm pretty good. I'm like a bloodhound. <laughs> I can pick up mythological threads in a lot of different places. But we see it. Even so, even through all the massive destruction, the book burnings, the uh, yes. annihilation of culture, the sup supplantation on the Christians destroyed pagan temples and they parked monks in them to use them as toilets, and then they built their te their churches on top of them. Not everywhere, but in some places. We can imagine that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, when you think about it, when you think about it, I mean. Uh, you know, uh, the very origins of Christianity is completely uh, uh, paganized. Uh, it's 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 a total. Um, it's a, like a, they they completely took all of the the pagan myths and incorporated them into their religion. And what they ended up doing was they they brought together the most amount of people they could by syncretizing all of these different. Uh, right thoughts and ideologies and uh it was a way of getting followers and uh they were very successful at it i mean uh you, you I, I mean it's it, the best thing you could say about christianity is that it was it it was a, a masterful job on the part of the people who were running the the show i mean they really they really did it yeah, they really did a fantastic job in doing what they did because they said basically, well, you got all them people up there with their, you know, saint or their, their, you know, God, whatever it is. It doesn't even matter who we're talking about. Uh, why don't we just have Saint uh, make up some Saint uh, Joseph or something that, uh, that did all the things that he did, and we'll put a, you know, we'll put a shrine up there for him or something. And then those people can come and worship at that shrine, and then they'll be part of the church, and we'll have influence over those people. And and uh, it was a, a masterful uh, piece of work on their part. Yeah, you can see this is really the culmination of centuries, thousands of years of what I call priestcraft. Yeah. That had been refined and honed, and there were ideas incorporated into it over the 
centuries, new ones, and to a point where it could be congealed like this. Uh, and definitely, if you look at the milieu of the day, you look at that, keep it in context, and see what's going on there. We have we had constant battling going on in Alexandria, for example, between Jews and Greeks. And so if you were trying to get some people to live in harmony with each other, you would possibly create, as had been done in the past, a new god to synthesize those people, to bring them together through religious worship. This has been done so many times. So it's not really ridiculous to consider this, that no. someone would create a new god. Because it had been done already. It had been done. If if you're you don't believe in the Greek gods, right? You think that they were made man-made, right? That's what most people today would say. These are mythical creatures. Human beings created them with their own minds. Most people are not going to say that the devil created them and to mystify the poets, which is what the <laughs> Joseph Carter <laughs> said. Just as <laughs> human beings were, it's a reaction of their environment, and they devised these gods through their own minds. And so they're man-made, right? The priests made them up, largely. The priests are in charge of religion. They're the ones who are doing it. So to say that the priest made another one again after having done it over and over and over again across different cultures and time zones and, and eras and generations has been done how many thousands of times that had already been done? It's really not such a far-fetched leap. I mean, how many times do we have to learn this lesson? <laughs> right before Christianity was created... From what, Judaism and paganism, so another synthesis here. That would be the Jews and the Greeks right there, boom. Uh, but before that, the Egyptian priesthood had tried to merge those two cultures in particular, also with the Egyptians, the three of them. There were, there were ha half the city of Alexandria was Jewish at that time. This is a massively important culture. Uh, so we have Jews, Greeks, and Egyptians in Alexandria. They're all fighting. So what happens? The priest comes to get, comes up and says, "Hey, let, let's create a new god." We'll, we'll merge Osiris with Apis. We'll have this god named Serapis. Yes. We we build this whole culture. They really put a lot of effort into Serapis. They hoped that Serapis would unite those factions in particular. And the reason why the, the Jews got thrown in the mix, too, is because they wanted to do animal sacrifices. And this was offensive to the Egyptians of the time. And the Romans, I guess, uh, who were also, or the Greeks, rather, Ptolemy was involved in this creation of Serapis in Egypt. And so the, actually, the Greeks also, not necessarily the leader, as I just said, uh, but the Greeks also wanted to do uh, animal sacrifice, but they couldn't do this to their other, to other gods. And so they had to create this new god to help, to, for these particular groups. <clears throat> And also to synthesize, obviously, the Egyptians in the mix as well. To get everybody used to everybody's strange ideas. And this is, again, not a new thing. Right. Uh, Mithra hits the, Mediterranean, uh, the uh, Mesopotamia area and he becomes merged with Marduk. <clears throat> and then you have you know, Cyrus following. Hold on a second. You have many you're, you have many leaders of antiquity who would follow different gods. Alexander was uh, obviously he followed the Greek gods, but then he went into India, and then he went into Egypt, and he picked up those gods. And in Egypt, he was uh, basically Horus incarnate. And so the, the, the leaders are doing this. You know, they're picking up. They're not going in and in, at that era without the intolerant monotheism. They didn't go into a culture and say, you must give up all your gods and only follow ours. They incorporated them into their pantheon. <laughs> Mithraism had been taken over by Romans and brought into the Roman Empire. It spread all the way up into Great Britain. It was massively important at the time when Christianity was being formulated. Yes. And, of course... And so uh, we see this synthesis all over the place. Yes, and you know it makes a certain kind of sense too. I mean, because let's look at the the, the fact of the matter is that the priests were often the uh, the, the de facto rulers. Um, you know, in in um, in Egypt, the pharaoh was God on earth, uh, but mm -hmm. in effect, it was the priests that really did most of the running of things. And um, and what is the purpose of any government is to keep the people uh, subdued and prevent them from rebelling and, uh, you know, generally to uh, 
to provide some some sort of control mechanism over the population and you know et cetera so I mean it would make sense for them to say, well, you know we got this group over here that's uh you know worshiping this particular god and this other one here and there's some conflict why don't we come up with something that's going to you know try to make that work a little better and keep those people in line and keep them from riding and killing each other and things of this nature so um you know it makes it makes a certain amount of sense uh, from that perspective uh let me ask you a question uh someone in the chat room uh, by the name of Hercules 22 um <laughs> asked if you would explain the mythicist position, he he cites uh, page twelve of your book, uh, um, Christ in Egypt. Yeah, Christ in Egypt. Yes. If you would take a minute to well, do that, to, to to tell people who are listening exactly what the mythicist position is. Well, now I'm not all that big on isms and whatnot, but it obviously people like to look at some kind of platform and so excuse me so i created this platform called the mythicist position or mythicism obviously i'm drawing on other work but i just made a easy to transmit definition of it mm-hmm. because the mythicist position which is essentially calling into question the historicity of various biblical characters mm-hmm. it dates back to at least the 18th century, probably earlier. I'm sure that there were people, in fact, there have been people questioning the historicity of the New Testament since the beginning. I know this is argued against a lot, but the fact is there was this Gnostic group called the Docetists who object, objected to the no- notion that this gospel story took place on the third dimension. They said it was all fantasy, it's all illusion, and we have in the epistles, first, second John, we have this the remark, the author remarking that those who say Christ has not come in the flesh are, of course, antichrist, obviously. Yes. And so, but we're looking at a doubt that Christ had come in the flesh, you know, going back to basically the second century. But in the, around the 18th century, this notion starts taking place. There's real scholarship going on to it. There's a uh, more expansive perspective. We have Humanism and free thought occurring. This is after, uh, as you had brought up, the pounding and bludgeoning by the Catholic Church of slaughtering and torturing people into Christianity for centuries. Uh, so now we have this expanded Bible criticism going on, and people start calling into question: the, Are these historical characters? Are Solomon and David were they real people? What evidence do we have for that? What about Samson? We have some some of these people, like Samson really looks quite fishy. Uh, Noah and the Ark story, does that, does that really happen in real life? Because they are starting to expand around the world and have cultural exchange, and they're finding these other stories in other cultures. Already they knew about the Greek and the Roman myths, and there was some comparative mythology going on there. Uh, Moses was compared to Dionysus, and there's a lot of overlap there. But that naturally, because of this conditioning, that the Bible supersedes everything, they thought that Dionysus myth had been devised on the Moses myth, had been founded upon Moses, not not as a myth. But and so people start coming and kind of turning that around and looking more closely at these ideas and then suggesting that these major characters seem to be as mythical as the figures from other cultures. And that eventually extended to analyzing the gospel figure of Jesus Christ. So the mythicist position, I, I define it as, uh, it represents the perspective that many gods, goddesses, and other heroes and legendary figures said to possess extraordinary and or supernatural attributes are not real people, but are in fact mythological characters. Mm-hmm. And then no. I append to that a, a definition, a, an analysis of who they represent as mythological characters, and that would have to do with nature worship and astrotheology in a significant part. Solar mythology it really isn't that difficult when you start looking at it, why all this stuff developed that as it did. It comes through human observation of their natural surroundings. Exactly, and uh, I think it's a it's a very worthy thing to look into. Um, you know, um, just for the, for the uh, people in the chat room who... <laughs> 
who continue to call you a Luciferian Satanist um, uh, because they hold to their uh, Christian point of view. Um, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'll say for myself that I have I have absolutely nothing against anybody believing anything they want. Uh, they can have faith in whatever they want. Um, they can uh, worship whatever God they, they feel, whatever God they like, whatever God they want to follow, and they can do so with their whole heart, body, soul, and mind. And it, uh, it that's fine with me. I have absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. If it works for you, it's great for you, and I'm happy for you. Um, but the, the problem, the problem that I have when it comes to, um, you know, debate on topics of this of this thing uh, uh, that we call religion is that there is this um, notion amongst followers of every religion that there is the idea that you have to get other people to come around to your point of view and uh, to to save them from some hideous, uh, monstrous. Uh, destruction and uh and and also um when i look at the the or the, the origin material for these religions like the bible and like the quran and like uh you know um other uh judaic uh, sources of material and like the talmud and others um it, it, when I when I see the God that's depicted there and the things that this God is supposed to have done, um, <laughs> to me, to me, if that God is the God, and and there is a God and that that's right. Him and He's doing right. the stuff that He's doing, right. I don't want Horrible. nothing to do with them. Absolutely, and you know, <laughs> you know these nasty people, these nasty people who are libeling and and uh, being calumnious, uh, throwing tossing. Character assassinations and others—they're an expression of that hideous god. And so they, you know, wow, he must be really proud of them for uh, going around trying to. I, you said very diplomatically what I would call beating people into their cult, <laughs> uh, insulting, yeah. bludgeoning, terrorizing people right. into their cultic mindset is basically what these people are trying to do by calling me names. By the way, the word Lucifer is—it comes from the Greek. Latin uh, Eosphoros in the in the uh, in the Old Testament in the Septuagint, and it's really just the god of light. Okay, and so the again, what we have is bigotry against other cultures. This Eosphoros uh, god was part of the Greek pantheon, and so of course that's how they're going to call everybody. Uh, uh, that they don't agree with heathenistic blasphemers, devil worshippers, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of bigoted nonsense. And the right. word Lucifer, in fact, in in Dutch refers to a match. It has to do with light, fire, uh, the gift of fire to humanity. So it's just silly. Just nonsense. like Prometheus. More, calling me the name exactly. Calling me the name of a myth. Oh, that hurts me. Ooh. <laughs> You <laughs> Zeus in you, you're you're a you're a uh, a misriac. Ooh, boo! Like, really make me cry. Uh, that's so stupid. <laughs> I, you know, people made fun of my last name when I was a child. I, it didn't hurt me. It didn't make me like them. You know. So don't just just stop with your immature, childish rubbish. It's so foolish and ridiculous. Exactly. You're not pleasing any god. And if you are pleasing a god, I don't want anything to do with your god because that god is revolting. Okay. Yeah, he's going around he, telling people to he's insult. Nuts. He's, he's nuts. nuts, and he's, yeah, telling, he's, nuts. he's telling you to go insult. You don't know me at all. I could be I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about this knucklehead who's right, right. I understand. Mm -hmm. You don't know me at all. I, I am ex an extremely nice person. I give of myself all the time to people around me, and I don't ask them. Oh, do you believe in my stupid God? Or uh, because I'm the, if you don't, then I'm not going to help you, and I'm going to call you names. I help people. I'd give a person the shirt off my back. I've stopped buses for blind people. I'm not kidding you. I do this all the time. I help people. I give of myself constantly. And you know, and I'm pretty poor. <laughs> I wish I had more. I'd give more. And so to go around and libeling people who are decent, moral, responsible individuals because they don't believe in your particular cultic god is, frankly, reprehensible and immoral itself. Thank you. I agree. And hey, I mean, uh, 
it, well, they they could have the uh, sanctimony to have the knowledge that we are going to burn in everlasting fire for all eternity. Um, so <laughs> at least even they have that live, to fall back on. Yeah, even though we live pristine, I, I, I don't do things bad to people. I have some regrets in my life. When I was younger, I, you know, like every kid, got a little mischief now and again. I was a great student, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I look back and I, I wouldn't do these things again. I don't do these things. I don't hurt people. And so uh, to to think that God was going to punish me with the horrible, hideous tortures for eternity, no matter how good I was, how how giving and loving and caring, compassionate, empathetic, responsible, taking care of everything that I was, uh, when I was living, I'm sorry. Again, gotta reject your God. Gotta say sorry. Not in my universe. Right. Good people are not punished for eternity just because they don't believe. Their actions are good. They're decent human beings. No, my universe. They don't get punished for eternity. That's all there is to it. You can't scare me with your baloney. You can't. Because right. I know myself, and I know I'm a good person. Since I was a child, I've been defending. Uh, people against bullies, and this is what I'm doing again. And yes. uh, and I know that I'm a good person, so you can't terrorize me by these lies about my being, my person. You can't. You might mm. as well give up. And all yeah. it does is reflect how bad your belief system is. Your belief system is bad. It's putrid, it's foul, and it needs to be aired and thrown out. It's like a rotten mattress full of rats. Get it out of here. Bacteria, get it out of here. Not interested in it. Air it in the sunlight. Come back to me when you're sane. Not interested in it. Going yeah. around spreading hate against people you don't even know. And so yes. if that's what religion has brought to these people, then it has failed. It has not made them better. It has made them worse. Indeed. And I say that also about, you know, the religion that people say, oh, it, it's just uh, some crazy person going off when he goes and blows somebody up or something like that. Well, then... What he was doing, throwing himself into the religion, didn't help him at all. So where's the intervention from God to prevent this guy from just a crazy person blowing himself up for no good reason? Right. You know, and whatever I, I, he devoted himself hasn't helped improve him as a person at all. Right, right. and 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 you know I I, I just have I I just have uh, you know basic problems with with any situation where you have to come up with very elaborate and frankly ridiculous uh, notions to explain uh, the contradictions that are so obvious in every religion and uh, you know I'm not as familiar like with Islam uh, but uh, I'm sure it's rife with the same sorts of things that we see in Christianity so uh, you know I'm not trying to single Christianity out I'm, I'm going to say that it's probably blanket true for all all religions as you see these uh these great uh, contradictions that cannot be resolved by any sane or rational person. And that's why I say that when I look at the things that, that Yahweh or Jehovah did in the Old Testament, and you know, calling for the utter and complete destruction of entire cities, right down to babies and uh, every single animal, and and all this kind of stuff, and and um, you know, I, I say to myself. The flood. Yeah, that's that's the act of a that's the act of a psychopath. And if <laughs> if God is a psychopath that wants everybody murdered in a city just because he said so, uh, including babies that could not possibly have done anything to deserve such a thing, uh, then I I don't want to I don't want that. I mean, if you want to worship <laughs> a God like that, then be my guest. Uh, but it's yeah, not but for keep me. it to yourself and don't try to terrorize yeah. us into it. I agree. I agree. You I know mean, that's, that's the thing that that uh, if God's all powerful, well, instead of slaughtering everyone, he, you know, there's that sexist stuff. Right. Again, he could snap his fingers and change everybody's mind. <laughs> but no, we got to slaughter them to teach them. First of, first of all, he made humanity badly in the first place. Made a mistake. Imperfect creature. Yeah. You know, then they're going to blame that on Satan. Okay, who created Satan? Yada, yada, yada. We go around in circles here. Exactly. But, you know, God, God makes this imperfect creature and then says, and then puts all kinds of temptations in his path and then says, but don't don't be tempted by that or I'm going to put you into hell forever and torture you. What the mm. 
What kind of barbaric, savage rubbish is this? Get it away from me. Not interested in it. Not selling. Not buying it. Go sell it to somebody else. Go sell it to somebody with a low IQ who's damaged. I'm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it has caused so much grief on this planet. Think about just the children. What this abuse does to their brains. Telling them they're born in sin. They have. I, I saw this. I hate this story. Drives me crazy. I, I cannot believe people are doing this to children. One of uh, my child's friends was, uh, we were at a children's fair, a fair, and there was a face painting booth. And so this boy goes up, and I know he's about eight years old, and the woman says, oh, hello there. And I, all of a sudden I'm realizing that this is the woman from his church, which is really evangelical. Okay. And so she starts painting his face. And as she's sitting there, and this is all about proselytizing to the children while they're painting their face. She's saying, and you know, the color of red is where Satan comes through. And the painting that's on his face saying these things. Oh, jeez. And then she paints black on his face, and she says, and this is the color of your heart without Jesus. Oh, my God. This, this psychological abuse on this child. This child, had already, his father was in jail. He was a mess. And I'm like, that is great. Tell this kid that he's got a black heart. <laughs> <He's> a little <laughs> child. He's eight and years he needs, old. <laughs> yeah, he needs Jesus to fix it. So you have to damage the goods in order to provide the cure, you know, the mm, fix. That's crazy. That's what it's all about. Yeah. How about we raise children to to believe that they are uh, wonderful, great kids. They're wonderful human beings. Uh, that They're full of love uh, and well, compassion. Well, if we can... Well, if we date that Acharya, uh, well, we might actually live in a world where people like cared about each other and stuff. And, uh, you can't have that. <laughs> no, let's damage them. Let's yeah, just, of course. We gotta it's have all a, about sadism. A, a terror and horror. Um, I got a couple more calls here. Let's see if I okay. can get them in here. Uh, first one is uh, Marfort Kleechan. I don't know if I'm providing that right. Marfort Kleechan? You're on the line. Oh my God! Well, that's you got to bleep that one out because <laughs> it's South Park with a bunch of cursing. All right then, that'll be enough for you. How about Siggy fourteen? Uh, Siggy fourteen, do you have something to add? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually uretic. I'm really quite amazed what I'm hearing here, because first of all, you shouldn't put all. Uh, religion over the same thing because religion should not be happening in this world. You're absolutely right. Religion is totally, totally destroying everybody. Uh, everybody, uh, actually, the whole, whole, um, what you call it, human race, because religion yes. is um, man-made. Faith is a whole different story. I'm, well, I'm, a, I'm a Jesus believer. Well, that's Hopefully. why I said earlier, Siggy, if I could just interrupt you. That's mm -hmm. why I said earlier, uh, when it comes to faith and belief, um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's anybody's business to, to tell somebody that they cannot believe or have faith in any God or anything that they want to. Acharya, do you agree with that? I say whatever you want to do with your own, in the privacy of your own mind is up to you as long as it doesn't spill out on me. Exactly, then I would agree with that point of view, and I think yeah, but then, but then I would like to say to you, then you shouldn't come on a radio station and and put everything what you believe in onto into people's heads because that's your faith and your belief no, I don't believe in anything, so it's not faith, and also you don't have to listen, so I'm expressing myself, I'm singing my song, I'm entitled to it, I'm allowed to have it. You can turn well, the channel. no nobody's coming like, into I'm, your I'm, brain, I'm, I'm not in your brain. L listen, see, you're totally obnoxious. Why can't you have I'm an totally obnoxious because I'm defending myself, of you course, an... because you're going to try to terrorize me into Why your perspective. Why do you have to defend yourself? I don't have to defend my Jesus Christ because I'm... I'll, I, I'll... Well, what culture are you? Why are you following Jesus Christ? He's, a, he's from the Jewish faith. The, why do you follow... What are you, you Chinese? Be... Why, what? what? Confucius what, what do you mean culture? No, I'm from a human race. All well, right? great. I don't so have am I. 
I, I'm a human race, all right? So I don't even even class myself as NDP. I don't label myself like you do, you know? So, you know, if you want to believe what you want to believe, right. But do not ever dare to call me some stupid name just because I live, believe in Jesus Christ, all right? I didn't call, call you a stupid name. name. Okay, and I if you really look... I call you a stupid name. If you really okay, look so into it, it will come all from the Catholic Church. If you really look into it, you do yeah, research. Yeah, I've actually studied it. Okay. I actually have read the Bible in the original language in Greek. So I, I look into it very closely. I did not call you a name. I don't know who you are. So I never called well, you a name. You what? Know, you know, you're saying all, all of the religion on, on, on Jesus Christ is a fake. Prove to me he's a fake. Prove uh, to I didn't me he's say a that fake. Jesus Christ was a fake. Okay, and then what I'm talking thing is, about is mythology. I'm talking about the various characteristics of the myths that are in the New Testament belonging what? to pre Christian mythology. Okay. What is the myth? What's the myth? Yeah, no, I'm saying I'm saying that the story of the gospel can be broken down to reflect ancient mythology. And if we look closer at the various elements of ancient mythology, we find that it has its roots very deeply even before, before that. Which is why I asked you what culture you are. Because if you look at your own culture, you're going to find this archetypical story in your own culture. Well, That's how all I'm know? No. It, it, it doesn't How do I know? Actually. I study the literature going back thousands you know what? of years. I'm going to tell you something now, right? My culture is Polish, German, Jewish, all right? Okay, fine. I don't, I don't uh, practice any of Jewish faith. I don't practice any of um, Polish faith. Nothing of Catholic, nothing of evangelical, nothing. I'm, I'm a true believer in Jesus Christ. It's not a religion, it's a faith. Totally different. Totally different. I say yes. Shut down all the churches. Don't throw money at them and actually throw bricks at them because there's all false doctrine going on. The Catholic Church is the biggest pedophile there is, and I'm wondering why there is not thousands of thousands of people outside in, on, at the Vatican crying out to that, so for the Vatican to be removed. So Okay, well, yes, I agree with that. But it, I would also say that if you looked at your pre-Christian pagan roots, uh, your Polish roots, your Jewish roots, you would find similar stories about a son of God, divine son of God, who was born of a virgin, did miracles, and so forth and so on. That's why I'm saying this is not a historical story. Now, whether or not you are interested in what I have found in the historical record, that's up to you. But you know what? You, you know don't what? have to be telling you me even... that I don't have a right to express the findings that I have the, found. The, the people who believe in all this evolution, that's a lot of bull. The reason being what we all also uh, created of a, spe a speckle of dust and it was intelligent. Come on now. What's all that about? Wait, wait what a you... second. The, the Old Testament, the Bible says that we're created out of dirt and a rib. I'm a, I'm a rib from Adam. Huh? Come on, now please stop. Why? Please. I'm not a rib why? from Adam as being a woman. Why? I didn't. Right. Eve did not eat an apple and therefore destroy the human species. Okay? You're These absolutely are myths. right. You're absolutely These are right. Myths. If, well, if they're you in the Bible. In, I, I, thought you, I thought you read your Bible. I thought you read your oh, Bible. Oh, I did read my Bible, dear. Well, I where read does it, it in say, Hebrew. Where does it say? Where does it say Eve eat it from a, from an apple? It okay, it's not called an apple. I understand that, but I'm trying to speak. I'm not trying to get into a theological debate. No, no, but you, a, but you put a semantic thought you, debate uh, here with you. I thought you read the Bible. Then you would know that. I did say that, in fact. So, okay, look, you know no, what? This person is an just apple, trolling me right thing. now. Okay. No, I'm, so not, I'm not I'm trolling not interested you. In having this conversation. No, because you can't have a conversation. All right. Thank you very much. I've given you your speak. Thank you for calling. Okay. Um, and as far uh, and as for myself, um, if I can say, um, it's uh, my show, and I can have anybody on my show that I want to have on my show. And if you want to listen to my show, you can listen to my show. If you do not want to listen to my show, you do not have to listen to my show. Nobody is forcing you to do so. Uh, so the guests that I have on and the beliefs that they have are their own. And who I have on my show is who I have on my show. And if you want to propagate a different position, you're free to get your own show. 
and you're free to say whatever it is that's on your mind, just like I gave you the freedom to say what you wanted when you called in. And uh, I want to thank you for calling in and expressing yourself. Um, but uh, to call in and suggest that I don't have a right to have people on my show that I choose to have on my show, I think that's a pretty uh, uh, bigoted uh, attitude on your part and uh, a, expressing a certain point of view that I'm sure if you uh, call yourself a true believer in Jesus, I'm sure uh, the Jesus, wherever you're getting that particular view, viewpoint from, I'm sure uh, that Jesus would be more accepting of, uh, of uh, different points of view and uh, be a little bit more caring about other people and their and their particular uh, points of view and their own expression thereof. So uh, uh, I will continue to It's really to have quite simple. It's very innocent. It's just an observation from uh, I don't have beliefs. I'm saying, like I said, if I go and I find out that there's a virgin goddess, mother goddess named Mari that predates the common era by centuries, if not millennia, then I have a right to be suspicious of the later stories of a Judeo-Christian virgin mother uh, concept named Mary. And so in order to, to you just you would have to remain ignorant. I'm not interested in being ignorant. I would have to say, not, I have to block out all these other cultures. I have to block out my own <coughs> culture, my own traditional culture, which would be, let's say, Swedish. There's stories of the Son of God in Sweden, uh, in in, in um, Norse mythology and Scandinavian mythology, and I have to block that out too and say, well, that's that doesn't exist. That's false. I have to remain in a state of ignorance in order to maintain this this uh, frantic belief system. And so I, I don't do that, and I have a right to express what I have found over these past decades of study from uh, primary sources dating back thousands of years. I have a right to have other people want, who want to know this information receive this information and they can look it up for themselves. I provide them all kinds of citations. Uh, instead of saying, you have no right to express yourself, I'm saying, go and look it up yourself. This is what I found. If you want to know about what has happened on planet Earth vis-a-vis -vis religious origins, here is how it goes from what I have seen of the data just crunching data, putting it through a computer. I don't have beliefs that color what I'm seeing. I don't have prejudices. The only prejudice I might have is against religious psychosis, religious pathology, religious sociopathology, uh, crimes against humanity. Uh, pick, I'm plucking out, in fact, uh, rather than banning religion, I'm interested in plucking out the real meaningful, meaty stuff that is not ethnically bigoted that is not uh, based on having to ignore every other culture on the planet so and I'm trying to see what is why do we have this story for example let me give you this example again the story of Mithra born of a virgin on December 25th uh, he's a sun god so what am I supposed to think then? I'm supposed to ignore all that, I guess. I'm supposed to just say that didn't exist. That's not real. So Again, here we come back now that this God apparently wants us to be ignorant. And I reject that too. So I reject the God who wants us to be ignorant. I reject the God who's going to burn me in hell. I reject the God who, you know, and, and I can't let this slide either. Though Even though people are entitled to what they want, I, I had just said, you can believe what you want as long as it doesn't spill out on me in a negative fashion. Mm -hmm. The story in the New Testament about Christianity, about the, the, the doctrine there, there's God the Father, there's Jesus Christ, and there's the Holy Ghost. And these are all male figures. And then there's the Virgin Mary, who's kind of like this nice little woman who just does everything. This is a very sexist ideology. And so if you want to keep that in your mind, that's fine. But I'm going to come and say this is a very sexist ideology, and I'm going to express that. Uh, and I do dare do that. So, sorry. You can keep your sexist ideology. I'm going to look at other things. Yes. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, what, what 
what can be gained out of having a rational, thoughtful discussion on these topics is that knowledge is shared and information is shared and the people that want to have it can can accept it and people who do not want to have it can reject it and or not listen to it. And I'll repeat again what I said earlier. This is my show and I can have anybody I want on it. If I want to have someone who is a uh, Church of Satan guy on next week talking about uh, the, the joys of worshiping the devil, uh, <laughs> I'll do it because uh, it's my do show. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's my show. I can do it because it's my show and I can do what I want. So I can choose whoever it is that I have as a guest. And you have the option of pressing the don't listen button or not coming to my episode page. It's your free will to do so. Um, but we're running out of time here. We only have about 10 minutes left. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have time to get... the other thing, too. When, when we, have, we have Christians proselytizing all over the place, they're all over the airwaves, they're all over the radio, television, all over the Internet. Mm-hmm. So that's perfectly allowed. But I can't even have my small corner of expression, you know. And right. So here's the other thing, too. If you're, if you're going to be so fanatical about your God is the right one, in this case, I'm a Jesus believer, this Jesus Christ is the right one, what you're saying is that everybody else's is wrong. And so, you know, the Hindus with Krishna and Shiva and uh, all of the gods that they worship, they're all wrong, and you're right. Should, th- should they be allowed to express themselves? Uh, they're not allowed either. I mean, we could be terrorized into this. This is the only one, and nobody else is allowed to say anything about it. Yeah, yeah this is a... Uh, yeah, it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense and it's not and it's not rational. And uh, you know, it comes back down to the point where if 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 your God did does exist and he did create everything, he gave us a mind to think with and when we come to conclusions and we think about things based on what evidence we're 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 given and we make rational uh decisions based on that material then are we not fulfilling that which your creator that you believe in uh, uh, designed us to do? And, uh, you know, my chat room has turned into a complete uh, uh, anti acharya uh, uh Satanist <laughs> uh, board. Guys? And, of course, I'm not moderating it. I'm not telling anybody to leave. They're all free to say whatever they want, and they're on there with their giant capital letters uh, with – Big giant font saying that you're of the devil and you're you're you practice theosophy and I all. Say, of yeah, I know. There's just a bunch of lies again. Yeah, uh, listen, that, folks, you you people who are telling lies about me, I gotta tell you, warn you again. Thou shalt not commit false, t- false testimony against your neighbor. You are testifying against me falsely, and if you believe in that God, He's gonna punish you. So you exactly. gotta knock it off for your own souls, okay? I agree. <laughs> but I'm I agree. surprised that nobody, that none of my my uh, supporters are in there. Uh, no, nobody decided to go. Oh, off. there there are a couple people in there that are that are going at them. Hercules Twenty Two is doing a good job, <laughs> and uh, there are a couple other people see, that are trying to terrorize me with their god. Well, see, they're trying to see ter- what? the lies and all the nonsense. I don't practice any belief. I have nothing to do with theosophy. These are lies, okay? And so if you want to continue repeating lies about people you don't even know, that's going to hurt your soul, not mine. I've well, already they, told you that. You need to stop. Right. They need to look at they need to look at themselves. Even even uh even Jesus uh in the in the Bible said, "Why are you talking about the moat in my eye when you're ignoring <laughs> the fence blank. post in yours?" Um uh, and that's and that's uh, that should hold true for everybody. I mean, that's a really good philosophy to have anyway. I mean, even if Jesus didn't exist uh as a as a historical character, that yeah. particular thing is very it's a very knowledgeable it's thing. One. Yeah, it's a it's real good, good saying. Yeah. You could say it to anybody. You know what? If if you're going to nitpick on my foibles or on Acharya S's foibles um and point out all of the various little things that you're trying to, you know, say about her and you're ignoring, you know, the great owner's burden of things on your own back, 
uh, I think that's pretty uh, hypocritical myself. And and uh, I think uh, if Jesus was around and and he was a real person, I imagine that he would not like hypocrisy at all. I imagine he would be very, very much against hypocrisy, and uh, so you know, really. Now, what what are they gonna What are they gonna do? Okay, what are the Christians gonna do when 1.5 billion Muslims tell them that their God, their Son of God, is not the Son of God? He right. is a prophet, a mere yeah. prophet who is superseded by Muhammad. Now, so there you have all these people who are telling you that your God is false. Yeah, and uh, put you know, them on are, the defense. I am one small person here, but you are facing one and a half billion people who are going to demote your God to a prophet. So you better get busy. Instead of spewing hatred at me and lies, you better get busy trying to defend your son of God against the onslaught of Islam. And exactly. you're going to need my help. You're going to need my help. So you're going to need the help of all of us uh, secularists and atheists and agnostics and so forth. So you better stop attacking us and let us help keep that thing at bay, okay? <laughs> because that's what's been happening, too. Because I'm a fierce critic of is Islam as well. And yes. I've been trying to make alliances with people and just because mind you i am not going around making personal attacks on christians i do not go into their faces and right. say you heinous this and that i don't call them names that person told a lie i don't call, i didn't call anybody a name um uh, so if i'm accepting your existence in here in, in this world you need to accept my existence in this world and we need to work together because we're, we've got our we're going to have our hands full with that mess so i'm not your enemy just because I question whether or not the character in the New Testament is as mythical as the Greek gods, this is a, a Jewish interpretation of mythology I'm saying here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not the enemy here. Okay, You're going to have your hands full, that's all I can tell you. If you're going to freak out about my non-belief... <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do when the mythological, uh, mythological moon god Allah is uh, the one in the, his religion's one in charge, and your your savior is demoted? Um, well, and why is your savior fighting this off? He's a supernatural son of God. Why can't he fight this off? Oh uh, well, I guess it's I guess it's the devil. Uh, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well. What, what I, other, I mean, what? there's no, there's no, you, you know what, we, you could, you, you can't, you can't point this out in any kind of rational sense to anybody who holds these beliefs uh, in such a way that they are impervious to any kind of, of thought and any kind of uh, exposure to alternative material. Um, I could, I, I could tell you, like you, like you, Acharya. You have done research. You have actually looked at this source material. I used to be a Christian apologist. Okay, I knew all of the reasons that the church gives for why the, the church is the correct one and why Jesus is this and why all these beliefs are such and so. And it was only after I came to that knowledge that I rejected it because I realized that it simply was not true. You know? Yeah. And... and well, and I think that, yeah, and I think that it, 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 if you're not afraid of knowledge and if you're not afraid to look into things, then just have a look at it. Look at the source material. Read read her books. I mean, you don't even have to buy them if you don't want to, you know, support her. Go go to a library or something. And Oh, yeah, and, they're free on Google Books to search to some extent. Hey, you know, the thing is, the same critical analysis that I've turned on – the Bible. I've also turned on the Quran and early yeah. uh, Islamic history, and I'm finding the same thing there. As you said, we're talking uh, moon god, basically, and yeah. paganism. That and so, so uh, if you want to see the true, I'm sure that if I put out a book on the roots of of Mohammedism on uh, uh, Islam, with the same kind of critical eye, that the Christians would be loving it. Oh yeah, they would. <laughs> as long they as would. you're, an, they would say, "What a great analysis! You're so right on. It's completely accurate." But as soon as I turn my eye on their <laughs> particular chosen faith, right. then oh no, 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 she's a complete lunatic. She's a Luciferian. She's a same master theosophist. So, 
Now, all of a sudden, my standards are totally whacked out, apparently. But I, I say the same thing. If you were following Hercules, I would find out that Hercules wasn't yeah. a real person. Now, 2,500 years ago, if you said that Hercules wasn't a real person, you'd get the same reaction. And yes. they, would, they would actually put you up on charges of blasphemy, and they might kill you yeah. for saying that. So you yeah. can run around today expressing the opinion that Hercules is a myth. And no one is going to come charging at you and start telling you you don't have the right to air your opinions and calling you names right. or whatever, you know, Luciferians right. and whatnot. Uh, but if you tried it 2,500 years ago, you might be up for charges. Yeah. So it's really, you know, what they say. It's shaka no songu, everybody to his own taste. It's Absolutely. Well, we're we're almost <laughs> down to the wire here, Acharya. Uh, let me tell you, I had a really great time talking with you. Uh, I <laughs> I would I, I would really like to have you on again in the future so we can talk a little bit more about some of the uh some of the actual symbology and things of this nature that uh you know show up in the Bible, some of the things that are, are um Yeah, like uh, the meaning of the twelve. You know, yeah, exactly. Stuff. Which uh oh, yeah, that's great it again. stuff. Yeah, I want you on again. Um even though you're a Luciferian theos, sophist, <laughs> devil worshipper, <laughs> Satanist. Um uh I but I've spent more than a half an hour <laughs> looking at those things. Like, what do you do? Wow, that's exciting to me. Okay, well, time we're, for we're, such nonsense. <laughs> we're wrapping up now. Acharya S. was here today. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, all, all you in the yeah. chat room. Come back next week for another episode <laughs> of The Sense of Truth. Bye. And Okay, we'll talk to you later, Acharya. Bye-bye.